In a stunning but likely not shocking turn of events, conservative watchdog group Judicial Watch has uncovered a link between Harry Reid and the deep state Trump Russian attack. It is believed that Harry Reid worked with Obama's deep state operative, former CIA Director John Brennan, who was passing classified information to the lawmakers in order to spin a narrative where they could attack President Trump. Communications in 2016 between former CIA Director John Brennan and the former top Senate Democrat are being sought in documents requested from the CIA by the Watchdog Group. The Stop Trump gang allegedly used several methods to create a narrative of collusion with Russia, according to Chris Farrell, Director of Investigations and Research at Judicial Watch. The group thinks Reed was part of this effort and is investigating whether Brennan leaked information to the lawmakers so that it could be made public, thereby creating a false narrative. And you know what? Senator Reed conveniently retired as well, so it probably took him out of the limelight. So we want to see what's really going on here. Who was briefed? Who was involved? The only way to really understand this is to shed light on it and what we're going to do with it. Saw group Judicial Watch tonight suing the CIA for communications between former CIA Director John Brennan and former top Senate Democrat Harry Reid. Did Brennan feed Reid information about alleged Russian collusion with the Trump campaign so Reid would then publicly push that narrative during the 2016 campaign? That's what they're trying to find out. Chris Farrell is Director of Investigations and Research at Judicial Watch and joins us live. Chris, great to have you with us. Hey, okay, so you've officially filed this lawsuit. Let's walk people through a little bit of what happened. In August, a Brennan uh, briefed a lot of folks, including then the top Democrat in the Senate, Harry Reid. Two days later, Reid writes a letter. It includes this uh, to Comey, then FBI director. The evidence of a direct connection between the Russian government and Donald Trump's presidential campaign continues to mount. The American people deserve to have a full understanding of the facts from a completed investigation before they vote this November. He had to know the letter would go public. So now that that narrative about collusion is now within the election conversation. Sure, this is just one of the channels by which the uh, Stop Trump gang, and there was obviously a, a handful of operators here, used various systems, whether it was the executive branch agencies, the, the Congress, um, to feed this narrative in and just have it create the perception that, well, everyone says, and well, everyone knows, mm -hmm. and there's an echo chamber effect, and once everyone everyone starts saying the same thing, it takes on a life of its own. And it's, it's an information operation. It's how, it's how the public is manipulated, it's how the media is manipulated, and all you need is, you know, the tiniest little kernel of half-truth, and they embroider and embroider and embroider, and they start repeating one another, and this echo chamber has a very neg negative effect. Well, we all remember four years prior to that, Harry Reid took to the Senate floor and said the word on the street, quote, is that Romney right. didn't pay taxes or something to that Correct. effect, this that people all, are saying. It's rumor and innuendo, uh, you know, it's slanderous in many cases, and... It's an old word, but it's a good one, calumny, right? It's mm -hmm. false swearing. Mm -hmm. It's when you just say stuff to destroy someone's reputation. They don't care if the facts are true or if they're right. You just throw it out there and just hope that it, it gains momentum or takes on a life of its own. And it, it, But this is a deliberate, orchestrated act by a set of, of people that are really part of this Stop Trump Gang. Well, and I know that you're trying to get to the documents that hopefully will give you more information. You're asking for any communications between Brennan and Reed or their Correct. staffers with respect to this um, collusion narrative that they wanted out there. Uh, now, a quote from the book Russian Roulette, which was um, written by um, Michael Isakoff and David Korn, people who were close to this story in many ways. They said this, Reed concluded the CIA chief believed the public needed to know about the Russian operation, including the information about the possible links to the Trump campaign. They're saying Reed thought that he was taking this information from Reed and being the conduit then to go public with it, maybe he believed that's why Brennan gave him the information. Look, these are very sophisticated, very sharp political operators. Uh, they didn't just, you know, fall off the turnip wagon. They know exactly what they're doing. And one of the ways to move the narrative out of the CIA and get it into the media stream, into the political stream through Congress, is to have Reed act as a channel to do that. And he can say, well, look, you know, I was in consultations with the CIA director, and this is a very grave matter. Who is a very senior membership member of the Democratic leadership acting as the conduit for this? And it's just another way to advance the narrative and to increase sort of this... Uh, 
the sense of a momentum of, of the importance of the story. Well, so we want to see what really was going on, who was briefed, who was involved. The only way to really understand this is to shed light on it. We're going to do it. Well, and as you wait for those documents and continue to fight, which you all successfully do on a number of key cases, I know that uh, the House Judiciary uh, Committee Chairman Bob Goodlatte says he's got questions for Brennan and would like to ask him those uh, in, <laughs> in another setting. So we'll a watch lot of people for that. have questions for Brennan. Yes, they do. All right. Um, Chris